guys and welcome to a brand new video this week. I am not doing a studio vlog, I'm going to be doing a studio tour. So if you're new here, my name is Meg and I run the illustration business Fizz and Flourish. I do character design, stationery, stickers, planners, art prints and I sell them on my website and on Etsy. Um, not so much Etsy now but mainly my website and you can usually find me doing studio vlogs all about how I run my business, the behind the scenes, the ups and the downs. So back to today's video. If you haven't followed my journey so far, I have been all over the place in terms of studios. My last studio was a rented space. I was there for a year and it was amazing. It was 200 square feet. I had so much space to stretch out my business wings and I was making a lot of my products in-house. So I was manufacturing them myself. Since then we've moved house and I'm now in my fresh brand new studio at home. Basically, I became a mum and going to the studio uh, was just becoming impossible. When I did try to bring him with me, it just didn't work out. The walls were really thin and I was always on edge if he started crying, I was trying to keep it down and here I'm at home. When he's napping, I can record in my studio, although the only downside is that his room is right next door, so if he's napping, I can't really record videos because I'd have to talk like this. So even if you've watched all my other vlogs, you'll have only seen small snippets of this space. Now, it's not very big. It's probably less than half the size of my rented studio, but I already love it so much more because it meets my needs as a new mum so much more. I'm actually getting so much more work done because I can just pop in and out. Whereas with the studio, it was like a whole event going into the studio. Whereas now I'm in my home and it's just amazing. I absolutely love it. When I arrived, the walls were already into the brilliant white. And at first I was like, I cannot wait to get color on those. I was excited to paint. And then as soon as I set up my camera, I realized wow the light is bouncing off the walls now i have got lighting set up and i'll show you all that i'll show you how i film my videos but i've got this great big window and yeah with the white walls my white desks everything is white the light is just really bright and it's actually a really overcast day today so even on a dark day i can still get some decent lighting although i do have one two three four lights set up at the moment so enough chatter about where I am and what you I'm in at the moment. Let's get into the tour. So this is where I was sitting and I'm gonna show you my lighting setup. So first of all, I have my desk lamp, which is from BenQ. I'll leave their link below. This was gifted to me. So they sent me this um, so that I could do it like a little review on my channel and I absolutely love this light. I kind of don't ever want to be without it. So if anything goes wrong, I'll be buying myself a new one. Yeah, I really love it. It helps stop my eyes straining so much. So I then have a daylight bulb in a regular lamp. So this is just an Ikea lamp. I already had it. It's not something I bought for the room. Um, I just switched out the bulb that I had from like a like a yellow bulb to a daylight bulb and you can adjust the um, the head of it. So I just point it towards whatever I'm filming or if I'm taking photos. Obviously it's better to be near the natural light but sometimes you just need a little extra. Then this cool little lightsaber is like the creme de la creme of lighting. Let me show you. So this is not something that I actually bought for the studio. This is actually Derek's. So my partner Derek, who actually popped the question at Christmas, so my fiance Derek, he does lighting for events and gigs and you know anything interesting you can think of. And so he's got a real interesting lighting. This is the Philips Hue light. I will leave a link below, but basically you can choose any color and you can set the brightness. These are all the colors. Yeah, so I can kind of have any funky lighting. I tend to just go for either the Energize, which is when I'm filming and stuff, and then if I want it more chilled out, I go for the Relax, 
and I usually point the light towards the wall like this to give off a kind of cozy vibe and obviously it works better when it's actually nighttime. So as you can see from the wires it's not a very permanent setup but I really like that because then I can move things around when I'm doing photography and everything like that so I can also take this downstairs when we want some cozy lighting and yeah I'm not tied into where a specific light is. So we may as well start in this corner. This is kind of my partial view from the desk. I have this pin board that I got in Ikea and I'm starting to um, decorate it. In my old studio, it was absolutely like full and you couldn't really see what was on it. It was all like layered and so I was kind of going for a little bit more minimalist and I actually have this um, peg, like pin board so it's cork and it's got colours through it and I really like this and I used to use this at uh, some of my markets and I thought this would be really cool to just um, display some postcards from other small businesses I've got some of my pin collections although I'm pretty sure I have more I just can't find them they're in a box somewhere um, yeah there's loads of little things from different businesses some things have been gifted to me and others I've bought now I have got loads more that I want to put up but I just haven't had a chance to like find a good home for them just yet so I'll leave a link in in the description below and tag all these small businesses that feature on my little artist wall. Okay, so moving on to my shelves. I've got some lovely little fairy lights that just go along my shelving unit. So I did have two of these, they're from Ikea. Um, again, I'll leave the link in the description below. And although I probably could have put another one here, I just didn't want this room to be too cluttered. So if I didn't have that extra shelf, then I wouldn't be tempted to just fill it with stuff. The room's not so big that I can afford to be really cluttered. Um, I really wanted to keep this room fairly minimalist. So again, in my rented studio, I used to have loads of stuff on the top of these shelves, but I've organized that away. I really hated it, I hated looking at it. Um, I know it's a working studio, but I really wanted this space to be a nice, calming place to be because it is in my home and I want to be able to come here and not feel stressed out. So on my top shelf, it's pretty, um, not that functional, but it's just really nice to look at. It's kind of decorative. I've got some emergency postcards in here that I use if I run out of thank you cards, although I think I'm running out of those. I almost forgot my hello, which you might remember from the previous studio, and I actually do use this. It looks a bit decorative only because it's got a, a wall hanging that actually my friend made for me. I do actually use this. Instead of throwing my jumper on the floor or on the back of my chair, I can just hang it up. This is a new home card that my brother actually got us. I really love the illustration, so it's staying up for now. This illustration here is actually one of my own, and I have never framed my own artwork. I don't know why, I feel like maybe it's too self-indulgent, I don't know, but do you know what? I really love this illustration, and it's actually been probably my most successful illustration in terms of likes and shares and saves on Instagram. I just wanted to display it. So this is actually an A4 poster, like a glossy poster that I had made for some Patreon happy mail. It's exclusive mail, so you can't get this on my shop, but hopefully one day in the future, I'm gonna be opening a secret shop on my Patreon so that you can access it. If you're a patron of mine, you can go back and purchase the older Happy Mail. This cute little bowl, I actually got from a charity shop the other day, and it's not purely decorative. I really love the shape of it, and it's actually full of wires. So it's not the best system because these are wires that I use quite often and if I need one at the bottom I have to take them all out. So yeah, it's not very practical but um, I'm still figuring out the room and it will do for now and it hides messy wires. So on the next shelf I have my trusty Cricut and because these shelves are fairly deep this actually is wide enough to have the cricket on and it doesn't hit the wall. So the mat, when the mat's going through at the end, it stops about here. So it's actually functional. I don't have to remove it. And it's also like my height, which means that um, I'm not bending down because, you know, in the past I've had my cricket machine on the floor. When I first started this business, I was working from a one bedroom flat. So I wasn't really having shelves and stuff like that. So this is really great because it means 
that I can just load my mat on my shelf from my desk, which isn't too far away. So it's kind of perfect. Then I have my little organization shelf, which I got from Ikea. Everything you see in the video, I'll try and leave in the description below. And yeah, this used to be chock-a-block with papers and it was really difficult finding stuff, but I finally organized it so that I can actually easily find the things I need. And I've only got things in here that I use the most. So uh, for my shop, I've got art prints, um, more art prints, posters. I absolutely love these A4 glossy posters. So this is really all stock. And on the next three shelves, I've got my different notebook covers. So they're all pre-printed. I just need to like make them up. So you've got lined and dotted paper. You've got your lunar notebook. And then on the bottom is all my sticker paper. So I've got my premium and then my shipping label stuff and a few other bits and bobs in here that I use every day. The next shelf house is all my stationery. Um, I am gonna be steering away from this, so I don't think I'll be reordering this in my shop. It's just so expensive to ship and yeah, I've got lots of plans for my shop, but at the moment, this is the stock that I have left. I did have more than double this, so I'm really proud that it's actually selling and I've reopened my shop now. It was on pause while I was on maternity leave, but it's now reopened and you can get these on my website or on Etsy. The next shelf down is a little bit messier, but it's still organized. So I bought these little boxes at Asda, I think. They were a couple of quid each. I just think they're really good for keeping things nice and neat. So the first box, I've got all my camera equipment. These are things that I use pretty often. I've got my Logie camera that I use for my live streams. I bought this fairly recently for my live streams on Patreon. I really wanted to up the quality of the live streams and the webcam on my laptop just wasn't cutting it. Um, yeah, I've got batteries, mic packs, my hard drives that I use pretty much every day. Uh, the next box is a little bit of a non-box. I've got loads of washi tapes that I use in packaging and I've got badges for my shop. Um, I would love to organize these more, especially as I'm adding characters to my badge collection. I really want a better way of like organizing these, but for now this will do. The next box I have stickers. So these are really popular in my shop. I have sticker packs, sticker sheets, and at the moment, I'm just organizing them with little handmade index cards. Um, so they're all pre kind of packaged and ready to go. So at the moment, this Fizz character, um, it's a large sticker, so you can see by the size of my hand. I'm actually giving this as a free sticker to all orders at the moment in my shop. Hopefully the plan is that I'll be able to offer a freebie in every order and then maybe every month I'll change the sticker. Um, but for now, that is the freebie. And then at the back, I've got some bookmarks that are left over stock. So this last box is a special box because it's full of Happy Mail that I send to my patrons. Now, my Happy Mail tier is changing. Um, this is all, this is next month's Happy Mail. Um, but I always order extra because one day, like I was saying before, I'd like to open a secret shop on Patreon where you can access all these exclusive prints because there are so many and um, I really love some of them. There's characters in here that just aren't on my shop and I think it'll be a really nice way to make use out of these art prints. My Happy Mail tier is changing. I'm gonna be doing goodie boxes rather than art prints on their own. So this will probably get much bigger and much thicker and fuller. And then just on my bottom shelf, I have some things like notepads that I'm using at the moment, my laptop bag and the actual badge maker stuff. So in this little nook, I thought it was a bit of dead space, but it's actually become really useful because it's where I keep all my tripods. I've got a mic stand hiding down there, my main, my main tripod that I use for pretty much all my filming, my mini desk tripod for a phone and the camera bag. I've actually recently upgraded to this kind of clamp one that can move and it, it's really good for overhead shots. Um, I've been filming a lot more reels and YouTube shorts. So having this just on my desk is super handy and yeah, it just, it just clamps on here. Now this is where the magic happens. These two desks are from my previous office. I actually have another one. Um, they're from Ikea, but I couldn't fit it in this room really. Um, but what I've decided to do is go for an L shape. 
and I'm absolutely loving this layout so far. So this desk, and they're actually quite wide, so it works well. This desk is where I sit, I'm at my laptop, I draw here, so I've got my iPad, and then this big space is great for product photos, just taking photos on Instagram. I love that it's white because it bounces light off the room, and that's just great for filming and photos and everything like that. And my chair, which I got from Argos, I had to wait ages for this. Um, another YouTuber I love, Emily Harvey, had this, and when I saw it, I wanted it, so it's really comfy, although, can you tell that my cat sits on it? Once I tuck my chair in, this little area behind me where I've got my little pink lighting, that you can change as well as a little remote control. And it's really nice little backlighting, especially when it's dark. I'll show you later on tonight and to show you what it's like. Then I've got my Epson Eco Tank, which I use all the time. It isn't pretty, but I thought it has to be out on the desk because I, I use it all the time. But I made it pretty with a candle and a plant. And then down here, I have my laser printer, which is a HB something or other i will leave it in the link below i don't use this as often but it is great for just printing you know things really fast that i need i don't use it for my stickers and stuff like that this is the one that i use for my stickers but it's been super handy and it's great that i can just tuck it away under the desk um especially because i don't use it every day so you've probably seen already my map of the world so this is a canvas rather than a poster and i started pinning everywhere in the world that i was shipping items to so if a new country um orders something or a new state i would put a pin in it now my friend is actually posting me proper pins so that you can see through because at the moment if you go over to the UK they're like covering the whole place because it's so small but it's really cool to see and it acts as a bit of a reminder that if my business is going slow then I can see where I've shipped in the world so I've shipped to South Africa, China, Australia and I have shipped to New Zealand but it's on the wood so I can't put a pin through it <laughs> maybe I should use a hammer so I really wanted to keep in line with my minimalist look. So I ended up framing some art prints and laying them out like this. I thought it was really pretty. This is by Boutique by Sha. And I think that's how you say it. I'm really sorry if I got it wrong. She draws the most adorable Studio Ghibli fan art and I absolutely love her work and her style. I've actually just ordered two more prints uh, from her shop and I'm gonna get them framed and have them up here as well. So it's gonna be um, a, a shah kind of wall. And then this art print of Mount Fuji I got in Japan when I was there and I've been meaning to frame this for about four years and I've only just done it. I really like that the reflection of the fairy lights are in these like glass frames. It makes it look so pretty. So coming around to this section of the studio. Oh, my mic. I use this for um, podcasts and sometimes use it for YouTube videos. Um, it's not very portable, so I don't do it that often. But I keep it on my desk because I use it for podcasts and things over on Patreon. And also it looks really cool. So it's quite nice for photos and um, stuff for Instagram stories. Then over here, we have a mini sort of packaging station. Now, I only opened my shop yesterday, so this is brand new as of yesterday. As soon as I opened my shop, I had four amazing orders. So thank you so much if you placed an order in my shop. This is where I packaged your order. It's definitely gonna get messy. Um, I'm not sure this is the best setup, but for now, what I'm trying to do is only take out a couple of um, boxes at a time. I know that's not gonna work because when I'm shipping like 40 orders, that's gonna be not enough. Anyway, I'll show you where I keep all the back stock of that in a minute. I've got my tissue paper, my glassine envelopes, thank you cards, which I need to update because I'm running out of, some more washi tape that I use, uh, confetti, my corner rounder thingy in my bob, and my freebie sticker that's going in all my orders. I just pop them there so that I don't forget. I've also got my scales here for when I'm calculating my shipping costs. I always do my shipping labels through click and drop, and then I just print my labels myself. At the moment, I'm doing it on my Epson, but I really wanna get a label printer. It'll just be so much more efficient. And I tape up my packages with this eco-friendly tape. It's really cute, it's in brand colors. And I've got my um, trusty, size guide from Royal Mail. So this way, you mainly use it for letters just to check if um, the letter needs to go as a large letter or a standard. 
And then I've got a little chair that I use for packaging, although this has definitely become my cat's chair. And then just to the left of my little packaging station, I have got this little um, bulldog clip with some packaging labels. At the moment, it is very dodgily taped on. Um, I would like to get like, I don't know, maybe like nail something in and hook it on. Um, but for the moment, this is working. So I'm just gonna keep it as is. So that's kind of my little desk setup. And now you might be thinking, how is it so minimal and neat and tidy and how are the shelves decorational, if that's a word, not functional? Let me introduce you to these double fitted wardrobes. <laughs> I got rid of some horrible plastic handles and put these little ones on, although they don't really work. But this is where I'm hiding my mess. Although I must say I'm trying to be really organized and when I was moving into this room I tried to kind of do it in sections. So at the top I have got all my overflow packaging. Let me just move my light in here a little bit. So overflow pit boxes, old stock that I'm going to sell as seconds eventually. And then down at the bottom this is kind of my packaging overflow. So I've got extra stickers more pit boxes there's like pit boxes everywhere tissue paper different sized envelopes more stickers there's just kind of a bit of everything more glassine envelopes i also have a huge amount of paper stock now this isn't very pretty so in the cupboard it went i've got some photography backdrop cards so yeah i've got different colors for different um photos like product photos a lighting box and then on the other side this box is a little bit of a messy kind of cupboard box of stuff that I don't know what to do with. Um, a little bit of overflow of everything and I've got my sewing machine and my sewing wool and all sorts in there and more sewing stuff and my film kind of kit bag. So I used to do film work and costume work for film and theatre so that's kind of where I have hidden that. So let's just close the door on that mess. And look once again at my beautiful studio. I absolutely love this space. So I'm gonna cut to night time so you can see what it's like with my cozy lighting. So welcome to my cozy nighttime studio. I've got a candle on, some backlighting, and it's just a really nice space in the evening. And it's great because that's usually when I get most of my work done because I have a seven month old baby. Hang on, let me change the lighting while I chat to you. So for working at my desk, the cozy atmosphere is great, but for filming, not so much. So I hope you've loved my little studio tour. Um, hopefully it's not been boring showing you like where things are put, but I personally love watching these kind of videos because they just give you ideas and inspiration for your own space, whether it be in a one bedroom flat like I was, or if you're lucky enough to have a spare bedroom that you can dedicate to this. Now, the big picture, the big plan for this house that we're in is this spare bedroom is gonna need to be a bedroom at some point in the future. So the plan is to convert our garage. Now the garage itself is sort of in the house, it's built in the house. So lots of houses on the street have actually converted theirs already and this one hasn't been. So the plan is, is to have that space as my studio. Now it's gonna cost a bit of money, so we are saving up for it. We also have a wedding to save for. <laughs> and also the bathroom needs redoing, the kitchen needs redoing. There's a lot to do to this house. It's pretty dated. It's not been redone since it was built, which is like 20 odd years ago. So everything is kind of stuck in the 90s, which I'm not saying is a bad thing, but maybe kitchens is not so good. So for now, this space is perfect for me. I'm not in a rush to move to the garage, but I think having a, a garage conversion with really big windows instead of the garage door, obviously, will just be perfect because I can spread out more and then we're not losing this as an actual bedroom. You might have noticed that my cutting machine isn't here. I use that for my notebooks, for making notebooks and stuff. And um, it's actually in the garage and it's on one of the extra tables that I had in my last office. And I'm gonna just go down there and make a load of notebooks and then come back up here. So I don't really need it in my studio space because it takes up a lot of room. So eventually when I'm down in the kind of conversion of the garage, that'll be perfect because I'll have that space. But right now I don't really need that in my office at the moment. 
Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have got plenty more studio vlogs. Usually they involve me dancing and being a little bit daft, but if you like this video, you will definitely like those. So that's it from me. I shall see you next week for a studio vlog. Okay, bye guys.